This is a story based on true events about my dad, George Vakovsky, and how his life affected his son, Michael Vakovsky, and his grandson, Jonathan Vakovsky. There's an old adage that the acorn doesn't fall too far from the oak. This seems to hold true for the Vakovsky men. George was born in Omaha and developed into quite a harmonica player. There are some who believe that the word Omaha is Native American for reed blower. But who really knows? The unconscious Omaha architectural motif lends itself to resembling harmonicas. On a windy day, it actually sounds like many harmonicas being played in the downtown areas due to the building shapes. George was put in Father Flanagan's Boys Town when he was young because he needed guidance. He spent much of his youth in the back rooms of Omaha's bars. Raised by pimps, thieves and whores, gangsters, drunks and more, sisters of the faith taught him the way to lead a life in love. And so he passed that gift to me in hope that one day I'd be just like him and better still, cause he was my dad. George liked fast cars, and he managed to get himself into the 1939 Chrysler Test Driving Corps, where he raised eyebrows driving around Omaha in a PT Cruiser prototype. George pressured Chrysler to pimp out the automobile in musical notes to highlight his harmonica playing talents. Just before George joined the U.S. Navy to serve during World War II, he indulged his photographic mastery at a fundraiser for Boys Town. After he started a family, Michael somewhat followed in his military steps by wearing the uniform of the Cub Scouts of America. Michael enjoyed the spontaneous harmonica playing of his father and felt the stirrings of the performing arts rising deep within his soul. Michael saved up enough money from his newspaper route and decided to buy an electric guitar. Even though my music, he truly didn't like, filled his head with misery, diffidence, and spite, told me to turn it down rather than switch it off, was something nice about it, cause he was my dad. Could only afford the guitar paid with my own dough, didn't get the lessons to make the music flow, so dedicate and teach yourself if you want to play, was something nice about it, cause he was my dad. Little by little, Michael struggled and taught himself to play guitar. Michael concluded that being an electric guitar player in 1964 was very cool. This helped build his sense of worth and self-esteem with the opposite sex. One day, disaster struck. One day, my guitar, the cement floor did meet. The plug was cracked, the sound no longer sweet. Used his skills and a whole lot more. Fixed it up better than before. Cause he was my dad. Michael was overjoyed at George's kindness and his heart was forever imprinted with this act of love. Many years later, as an adult, Michael was able to personally thank George for fixing his guitar. In the course of time, Michael had a son, Jonathan. Jonathan was born with long slender fingers, which Michael assumed would pluck guitar strings and perform on stage with him, father and son. Jonathan turned to the synthesizer and piano keyboard, however. Before he left, Jonathan had expressed a wish to learn the guitar on his own. Michael went out and bought a black guitar, not unlike his first instrument. Jonathan was appreciative of the gift and that his father had taken his desire to play the guitar seriously. Jonathan carried his shiny black guitar off to school along with Michael's synthesizer. One day I hope my son will sing this song. With his own words, he can't go wrong. On his keyboard, the notes ring out, and with a flourish, so he'll shout, Cause he was my dad.